everybody. We're talking about estoppel certificates today and um, what uh, the problem is, quite frankly, is that uh, many of us have gotten involved in things that we probably shouldn't have gotten involved in and uh, or our parents did or, uh, or something. And so uh, this is a procedure that you can use to put them into estoppel. Okay, and I have used it quite successfully, actually, and um, uh, you can do the same thing. So we'll go through this procedure. Um, estoppel is a bar that prevents one from asserting a claim or right that contradicts what one has said or done before or what has been legally established as true. Okay, so that's Bloch's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, and what has legally been established as true is that there's a straw man that exists uh, with a name similar to yours, and these thieves want to steal some of that straw man's money. And so they're getting you to be the surety so they can assault you based on this straw man that's out there. So you got to defeat that. And your parents did that, and your parents' parents. I mean, it's nothing new. It's been going on for a long time. And e even if they didn't, okay, there are so many brain-dead idiots out there that they just automatically assume that you're one of the slaves. And you got to defeat it. Estoppel certificate is a statement signed by a party such as a tenant or mortgagee certifying uh, for another's benefit that certain facts are correct and that a lease exists, that there is no defaults, and that rent is paid to a certain date. Um, a party's delivery of this statement stops that party from later claiming a different state of facts. Okay, that's Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition again. Now, uh, this is obviously talking about uh, uh, mortgages and tenants, uh, but the same principle applies with your public servants. Estoppel by silence. Estoppel that arises when a party is under duty to speak but fails to do so. Also termed estoppel by standing by or estoppel by inaction. And principles of estoppel apply against the state as well as individuals. So there are two kinds of classes. So you have to understand and if you don't understand this, you need to go watch my playlist called Do You Know Who You Are? Okay, there are two classes of citizens. There's, you can be a state citizen or a federal citizen. We're all born state citizens. And, and a U.S. citizen is a fictitious entity. It's under interstate commerce clause. And so, but what happens is when your parents run down and register that birth, they create a fictitious entity for interstate commerce purposes. And so that's what they're trying to go after, okay, is that fictitious entity. And they need to develop evidence that you're one of the slaves. You're a U.S. citizen. And uh, so what you do is you serve them uh, with a document by registered mail that defeats their presumptions. And they screen out anybody that's intelligent, Okay, in their hiring process, they want they want low intelligence thugs uh, working. I mean, you see it every night on TV. They're murdering somebody. Okay, that's that's exactly what they want. Uh, Jordan versus City of New London, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. Um, um, and Robert Jordan had a master's degree and scored too high in their test. He was too intelligent. I know several people who are not hired for these kinds of positions because they score too high on the test. They don't want anybody that's intelligent. They want thugs. Okay, they're getting exactly what they want. And until we, the people, stand up to it and put a stop to it, it's going to continue. And uh, this is ABC News website where it talks about it. New London, Connecticut, September 8, 2000. A man who's bid to become a police officer was rejected after he scored too high on an intelligence test and lost his appeal in his federal lawsuit against the city. And so, there you go, you know. Um, also, there's Satanists, okay? There's a guy by the name of Mark Passio who's a former Satanist priest. He's got some natural law videos, talks about the pillars of Satanism. And one of them is moral relativism. Uh, there's no absolute right or wrong. Truth is relative. We just make up what's right or wrong. What's right or wrong is what we decide today, and tomorrow it'll be something else. Gee, that sounds like a court case. And he says two-thirds of 
people in America believe in moral relativism. I think he's being generous. I think it's more like about 90%. I mean, there is a lot of Satanists out there, and 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 these code enforcers are a perfect example. Um, these pillars of Satanism are forms of mind control, according to Passio, and I think he's right. Order followers, one of the pillars of Satanism is order followers. These order followers are responsible for all the atrocities in history. They just follow orders without thinking about whether it's a lawful order or not. They're willing slaves. And uh, Passio's got some great videos about order followers, and he goes through and explains it. And so um, he says they're brain damaged, actually. <laughs> And and he goes through and explains it. It's not meant to be an insult or to be a derogatory in any way. He says that they actually have shown that these order followers have a physical defect in their brain. Anyways, um, the uh, he's got a YouTube channel, What on Earth is Happening? And uh, that's the link to it. I highly recommend you go there because uh, he's got some great stuff. He goes through and explains he took Latin in high school, had to learn Latin. So he goes into the derivative of a lot of these words, and he just explains it all in great detail. Um, so he's got some great videos on natural law, too. Anywhere, anyone who is wearing a military uniform is an agent of the Vatican. These are all order followers. Wearing a clerical dress or religious habit on the part of lay folk is liable to the same penalty on the part of the state as a misuse of military uniform. That's found in Article 10 of the Concordat of 1933, which Hitler signed with the Vatican, actually. And it's also uh, Canada, United States, have all bought on to that, by the way. Interesting to note. Almost all so-called governments are bankrupt and owned and operated by the Vatican. At common law, a sheriff would have a star only. At common law, there is no uniform. The World War II war crimes tribunals, all the Nazis claimed they were just following orders. Well, gee, that sounds like they were Satanists. They either suffered death by hanging or spent the rest of their life in jail. Some of them are still hunted to this day. The Vietnam My Lai Massacre, they were convicted of murder. Today, order followers are everywhere. Okay, so, you know, you need to understand this, and this is why you need to do your best to assert yourself, or you're just going to be a slave. This is good faith in Canada, in that communist country to the north, and this is in the Criminal Code of Canada, Section 25.2, and it talks where a person is required or authorized by law to execute a process or to carry out a sentence, that person or any person who assists them is... If that person acts in good faith, justified in executing the process or carrying out the sentence, notwithstanding that the process of sentence is defected or that was issued or imposed without jurisdiction or in excess of jurisdiction. So they don't care. They want these kangaroo courts to go on. They intend to assault people, kidnap people, and falsely imprison people. It's so good for business. Yeah, let's let's have a party. He's a communist country in Canada. This one is the worst one that I've seen. Uh, there's some other ones that are pretty bad. There's no doubt about it. But this is a communist Canada. It is the worst. Uh, this is Texas Code of Criminal Procedure. The court shall presume that a pleading motion or other people's paper is filed in good faith. Okay. Um, and um, then also... Um, there's more stuff in the Code of uh, Criminal Procedure. No evidence obtained by a officer or other person in violation of any provisions of the constitutional laws of the state of Texas or the constitutional laws of the United States shall be admitted in evidence against the accused on the trial uh, of any criminal case. And then they go and throw this exception in there. <laughs> So that sounds real good in that paragraph A, but B just throws it all out the window. Uh, it is an exception to the provisions of subsection A of this article that the evidence was obtained by the Leo acting in an objective good faith relying upon a warrant issued by a neutral magistrate based on probable cause. Okay, well, first of all, there's no such thing as a neutral magistrate. They're all bought and paid for. Um... Um, and there's no warrants, okay? And we'll go through that. Uh, it's a capius is what it is, and a capius is not a warrant. And that's all they issue. And um, and so, uh, but the bottom line is, is you still have to defeat their good faith, okay? That's what it comes down to, is you still have to defeat their good faith. Or they're going to railroad you, and they do it all the time. And this is talking about... Um, 
when a judgment or sentence has been entered against the defendant and the defendant defaults and the discharge of the judgment, okay, in other words, you haven't paid the extortion, uh, that may confide, they may put you in jail until you pay the extortion. And the, the top paragraph is, um, is um, if you're indigent, and then the bottom paragraph is, is if you failed um, under this other article, okay? Um, is not indigent. The top paragraph is not indigent. The bottom paragraph is you are indigent. And so, anyways, yeah, they, they want to collect their revenue. It's always about the money. A KPS is a debt instrument. It's always about the money. They want to collect the money. They don't care about whether justice is done. These people are a bunch of Satanists. Uh, and then this one, payment of fine. This is basically talking about the same kind of stuff. Um, and that's if you're in jail. And um, if you fail to make a good faith effort to discharge, see, nothing's paid. It's all discharged, okay? Nothing's paid. Uh, uh, but uh, there is a section in there that talks about uh, how uh, the payment can only be accepted in lawful money. So it's impossible to pay it. And so um, that's the argument, isn't it? Uh, anyways, um, but so that, they'll, they'll, you got to still take away their good faith. They still got to take away their good faith. This is California Penal Code. No cause of action shall be brought against any provider, its officers, employees, or agents in providing information, facilities, or assistance in good faith compliance with a search warrant. Okay, so again, you have to take away their good faith. And that's what an estoppel does. Okay, takes away their ability to operate in good faith. In my, when you watch my uh, Asserting Sovereignty series, my playlist, I went and did all sorts of things in Arizona, and the reason I got away with it is because of this. Okay, this is Arizona Revised Statutes, Section 13-4306, Powers and Duties of Peace Officers and Agencies. A person who acts in good faith and in a reasonable manner to comply with an order of the court or a request of a peace officer is not liable to any person for acts done in compliance with the order request. Okay, so, um, again, um, as long as you can show you defeat their good faith. And so the, I sent out notice and demands, and I did all sorts of things. There was a warrant that was out there for probably about five years. And I'd get stopped by the cops, and they thought it was a joke. And um, absolutely, okay. Once you do it properly, they'll they'll they won't touch it with a ten foot pole because they cannot operate in good faith. Um. Anyways, this is Oklahoma Code of Criminal Procedure, immunity from liability. Um. This is this state or local government agency or law enforcement officer, prosecuting attorney, court of the clerk, or any late, uh, state or local government official acting in an official capacity. This is actually pretty good because they're saying acting in an official capacity, and they all and they rarely act in an official capacity. But again, you the burden's on you to defeat all of that. Is immune from civil and criminal liability for an act or omission arising under the registration or enforcement of a foreign protection order or detention or arrest of an alleged violator of a foreign protection order if the act or omission was done in good faith. Okay? And this is, I mean, if you search through their statutes, if you search through the California statutes, if you search through the Texas statutes, there's all sorts of uh, uh, good faith statements all over the place, okay? And so um, this is only one. Uh, this is New Mexico Code of Criminal Procedure. No peace officer shall be held criminally or civilly liable for making an arrest pursuant to this section, provided he acts in good faith and without malice. And, um, and so, again... You got to take away their good faith. You take away their good faith, then they 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 don't want to talk to you. The burden is on you to assert your rights. If you do not assert your rights, you lose them. Anything you say can and will be used against the law uh, against you in a court of law. I can't assert your rights. You have to assert them. If they're talking to you, they're building a case against you. That's the way you have to treat it. Start building a case against them. Because we're under martial law, the courts presume everything. If you go on the attack, you can defeat their presumption. This procedure is followed. If this procedure is followed properly, the system will deal with any criminals that are exposed. Watch the martial law is here video. Okay. 
And if you don't, if you have any doubt about us being under martial law, watch the martial laws here video. Because of their good faith doctrine, they can assault you, kidnap you, and falsely imprison you and essentially get away with it. A plaintiff who seeks damages for violation of constitutional rights or statutory rights may overcome the defendant official's qualified immunity only by showing those rights were clearly established at the time of the conduct at issue. And so, again, this is qualified immunity. And there's more court cases. There's more right here. This is Supreme Court. Okay? Um... Anyways, qualified immunity protects government officials from liability for civil damages insofar as their conduct does not violate clearly established statutory or constitutional rights of which a reasonable person would have known. At common law, there's no immunity, whatever. Okay, and that's why they have to put us under martial law, because then they can they get rid of common law, and they can go ahead and assault you and get away with it. Qualified immunity defense fails if a public officer violates clearly established right because a reasonably competent individual should know the law governing this conduct. If you want to hear the story about how this procedure was de developed, it is found in the Asserting Sovereignty video playlist on YouTube. This is a procedure that Rice McLeod started and I modified over about five years. I send a registered letter to my public official. It's always got to be registered because it's kept under lock and key, and there's a chain of custody. I have proof of service. When my public servant violates my rights, I file a criminal complaint against him and send it to his boss. After 30 days, I make up another criminal complaint naming my public servant as a, and his boss as a co-conspirator. They presume I'm one of their slaves. I'm presuming they're... A, a, an accomplice. They have 30 days to respond. If they don't respond, then he's an accomplice. Um, and I send it to the next boss up the chain of command. After 30 days, I make up another criminal complaint, naming my public servant and his boss as a co-conspirator and accomplice, and after the fact, and their boss's boss as a co-conspirator and accomplice, and send it to the next guy up the chain of command. I keep going up the chain of command right up to the President of the United States or the bitch. I always make sure they get a copy. I always record the criminal complaints because after 30 days it becomes public policy, which is like a regulation. Okay, so, so the final one is the one that gets recorded. When I send them a notice and demand, usually I get no response at all. That means they've acquiesced. If there's something that you're saying that's not true, then they have a duty to point it out. A anytime you get a letter from any government or corporation, it's an offer of contract. You know, they send you a letter saying that our code says that you have to mow your grass uh, and it can't be more than four inches. But that's an offer of contract. Reject their offer of contract. That's all you have to do. You have to do it within three days under their satanic law merchant, but that's it. And this is how you do it. It's a notice for the record. And he actually, I print that on there at 45 degrees across and in red ink, too. So it's just like that, except and I sign it. Uh, date received. I, by affidavit, am a declared living American sovereign, standing with treaty law of God. Uh, do accept your offer for value. And the photo of following reasons, I'm returning your offer rejected for discharge and closure. You brought United States corporate law with color outside your jurisdiction without an international treaty with my republic state as you have no jurisdiction on the land of Texas. You have falsely accused me of being a citizen of the United States. You're trespassing and criminally attempting to convert corporate statutes with color into lawful criminal codes without chartered regulatory and delegated jurisdictional authority. You're not registered or chartered for conducting business in Texas by my republic state. And you fail to state a lawful claim upon which relief can be granted, all of which is submitted under oath. And make sure that the date sent is within three days. So this one is received on the 28th and it's sent on the 29th. So that's one day. It's three business days. So it can go as long as three business days. And then I sign it, send it back to them. And uh, I usually like to use registered mail because then I have proof that that uh, that they got it or certified at least with that. If I get an offer of contract from a corporation, I send them an invoice and I never hear from them again. If I get an offer of contract from a government, I send them a notice and demand and an invoice and then see what happens because there's a lot of criminals running around there in government these days. We have to build a prima facie case that is admissible as evidence in their kangaroo court. 
In today's world, in order to be truly sovereign, you must be prepared to force the issue up to and including court. Kangaroo court. Number one rule is educate yourself. You're in this position because your parents and grandparents did not understand the issues. And even if they did, there's so many brain-dead idiots out there that they just, they're a bunch of thieves, okay? They're pirates. They just presume that you're one of the slaves. The people were just caving into all this stuff. Study out the issues. The buck stops here. That's rule number two. You are the one that's responsible. That's the ultimate responsibility is you. You have to assert your rights. You have to accept responsibility for your actions. You have to prepare your future. You know, if you want to be sovereign, you can receive nothing from the government. If you do nothing, then you're at least partially responsible when they violate the next guy's right. And, you know, I don't know if you consider yourself a Christian or not, but if you do, then you're not going to do too well on Judgment Day because, um... The, the Bible is pretty explicit about about standing up and, and, and putting them in our place. All it takes for evil to succeed is for good men to do nothing. The important thing is do something. It's not necessary to use the forms. You use my forms. You make up your own. I don't care. Um, this process builds a track record and a case showing your assertion, and which is admissible in evidence of court, and they already know you're sovereign. This procedure builds a case against your public servant for multiple felonies. They will never do anything that comes close to admitting that they committed multiple felonies. If this procedure is done properly, the system will take care of your problem for you. Okay, I can't tell you how many times people have disappeared after I filed a criminal complaint and sent it to their boss. Never saw them again. I don't know, quite frankly, what happened. Uh, some of them I know, like uh, the U.S. Solicitor General, all of a sudden decided to resign and go into private practice, and so, you know, whatever. And uh, the bottom line is, is that, you know, if you have your ducks in a row and you have your arguments right, you can hurt them in a major way, and, and, and they'll think, they'll, well, first of all, they'll, they won't do it again. Um, and hopefully the next guy doesn't do it either, but you never know. There's a lot of criminals out there that don't think twice about doing it, and until you assert yourself, you know, they're just going to walk all over you. You will rarely get a response. You have to learn to between the read the lines, uh, to read between the lines. If they send you a response, if they do not send a response, they've acquiesced. It's called a notice and demand. Notice is common law, okay? What do you think those speed signs are out there, okay? That's notice. You're giving them notice. You cannot hold them responsible until you can prove that they know better. Sovereign's demand, okay? Criminal responsibility can only be proven when you show that it's deliberate, it's calculated. That's the only way. It's not negotiable. It's not a request. It's a demand, and it's now. Uh, notice and demand it's called administrative procedure it's also common law this gives notice to the authorities about your assertion gives them an opportunity to rebut it it defeats their presumptions okay each paragraph is an estoppel certificate you have to look at it that way and you and you might think of some that that i haven't even included and it defeats their claim to be operating in good faith the Oath of Office Acceptance, Paragraph 1. Now, these paragraphs may not be in the same order. They, The first few are probably in very similar orders, but as it gets on, you know, some of them may be different. Um, and and so, uh, you know, you need to uh, keep that in mind. And uh, it's, a, you, you, it's your document. You modify it. You make it how you want it. Uh, uh, anyways, Paragraph 1 is an Oath of Office Acceptance. The oath is all we the people have. Get a copy of their oath or give them an oath. I usually just give them one. It's simpler. The oath of office supersedes everything else. The oath of office is your trump card. They have no duty to a corporation, okay? Their oath is to the people. That's the only pleased people is to. And so when you sell them, I accept your oath of office, you're saying, I am one of the people. And, uh, and I, you know, just that by itself a lot of times hurts them in a major way. <laughs>
<laughs> Paragraph two, equality under the law is paramount. Okay, that's essentially saying that if they're going to send you to a mental institution, you have to go there too. Everybody's got to be treated the same way. It defeats a normal strategy they had, these Satanists have. Paragraph three, competence, incompetence, and representation. There is no such thing as an incompetent sovereign, okay? And so one of the paragraphs says that I am competent in my affairs. The another one says that you're not competent in my affairs. It also says no person is competent in my affairs. And, and if you think you're representing me, you're fired. If they are making legal determinations for you, then they are representing you. Okay, they cannot accuse you of being one of their U.S. citizen slaves unless they're representing you. Okay, it's impossible for them to accuse you of that without representing you. When you make application for anything, you're giving them a power of attorney. Uh, paragraph seven is the copyright. I always tell them, I, I tell them about the copyright. I used to uh, have a copyright document that I'd recorded and Sent them a copy, but um, the um, I got tired of that. It got you know overly cumbersome, and uh, my attitude is: is I sent it to them by registered mail. I have proof they know it, and if they use that copyright, then they've agreed to the fee. And um, it's a major deterrent, and they're in business to make a profit. Um, paragraph 8 makes them communicate under penalty of perjury. It makes it very difficult for them to communicate since they can't lie anymore. Do you think that judge or that whore on the bench is sitting up there telling you the truth? I mean, he's not under oath. They lie all the time. Okay, that's why I don't even go in there. That's not nothing to do with justice in those kangaroo courts. I don't even go in there. I just file a notice of void judgment. Um, copyright, again... You're, by providing notice that your straw man's name is copyrighted, it's essentially an offer of contract. All you have to do is accept their offer of contract and send an invoice and then proceed against them with a commercial lien. Uh, paragraph 10 lets them know that if you're going uh, you're gonna to hold everybody in their chain of command personally responsible, and that's exactly what you should be doing. Uh, 11 and 12 talks about zip codes, talks about martial law, under their Title 18, United States Code, I always call it theirs. Uh, Section 1342 is about using fictitious addresses and fictitious names for mailing purposes is a felony. Okay, so I tell them I have it worded very specifically. I tell them my proper mailing address, and that's based on the wording in their code. My proper mailing address is this, and if you, if you don't use it, you intend to commit mail fraud. Um... Paragraph 13 to 15 makes it very clear. I'm not interested in being a surety or accommodation party. And if they get you into one of their sole contracts, it's just proof of their perjury of oath. Uh, paragraph 16, no driver's license. If they do not argue about this, then you get then they have given you permission. Driver's license is color of law. There is no authority to require one. And, um, and they don't ask for the straw man's driver's license. They ask for mine. I don't have one. They didn't ask for the straw man's. I don't even carry that thing with me anyways. Paragraph 17 is picture identification. You can record, make up your own and record it with a counter recorder or um, use, uh, get a common law one. You know, I mean, there's a bunch of uh, organizations that are out nowadays that provide common law identification. And, uh, and that's another alternative. Um, in Canada, land titles uh, is a has a miscellaneous category. In the U.S., you use a counter recorder. Anyways, you can record uh, documents uh, in any state in the union. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, in Texas, here it costs. Uh, we took some documents to get recorded here recently, and they wanted thirty bucks for a one page document. And uh, I started looking into it, and Arizona's ten bucks for a one-page document, and then one pa a buck a page after that. So obviously, um, we're going to send it to Arizona. It doesn't matter where it's recorded. Um, paragraph eighteen: A person is a fictitious entity. Uh, a motor vehicle is commercial. Um, at paragraph 20, a private vehicle gives them notice that you do not have a motor vehicle. I've seen vehicles in Arizona. The registration's expired by many years with private vehicle on them. A friend of mine told me that a cop came up to him and said, why is my computer telling me to leave you alone? 
I had an Arizona DPS officer say, why don't you make up your own plate? So, uh, and I would, quite frankly, I've got plates that I would use if I was in Arizona all the time, but my problem is I travel too much. Paragraph 22, you're not authorized to ser serve commercial process on me, and that's exactly what they're doing, okay? They're serving you with commercial process, okay? Speeding tickets, commercial. It defeats them, okay? They're involved in commerce. They have the right to presume, or they've given themselves the right to presume that you want to engage in commerce, and it defeats it. Their legislation's color of law, it's all color of law. They have no authority whatsoever. Uh, and this is a generic uh, disclaimer I put into uh, all of my documents. If, if you use their codes, rules, and regulations, they can presume you're an entity that is subject to the said codes, rules, and regulations. So I say something like the use by me of any statutes, codes, rules, regulations, or court citations uh, is not intended, nor should it be construed to be that I've entered into any... Oh, it's intended to be um, for my public servants and not intended to be or nor should it be construed to be anything that I've uh, I've, I've something like um, um, I have uh, that I've uh, entered into any jurisdiction alluded to thereby that's the right that's the verdict anyways um, so I have that one in there that's, that's a good one somebody actually used that and, and I just modified it a little bit and, and uh, somebody else's idea though uh, paragraph 30, if they receive commercial papers compensation, then they're a municipal corporation. Uh, the law of nations, in order for a nation to exist, it takes three things, people, land, and resources, and I say I'm a nation. The only legitimate held by power held by any government is power that's delegated by we the people. If I delegate authority, I still retain that authority. If I delegate authority, I can revoke that delegation at any time. Unalienable rights are not inalienable rights. Okay, and that's these paragraphs. Inalienable rights are can be alienated because of a one of their so-called satanic contracts. Or one of their they are satanic contracts. One of their so-called contracts. A law merchant contract is a nullity. A presumed contract is perjury of oath. A common law contract is the only valid contract between living souls. Everything else is a nullity. Uh, I have the right to resist an unlawful arrest. This is one that you might want to do or you might not want to do. You have to think about it. This is kind of getting pretty assertive. They don't like this one, quite frankly. Uh, where an officer is killed in the course of the disorder, which naturally accompanies an attempted arrest that is resisted, the law looks with very different eyes upon the transaction when the officer had the right to make the arrest from what it does when the officer has no right. What may be murder in the first case might be nothing more than manslaughter in the other, or the facts might show that no offense had been committed. And that's U.S. Supreme Court. Any restraint upon my liberty is an arrest. And, uh, and so there's actually other paragraphs. I mean, some of my documents are up to like 35 or 40 pages, and they're legal size paper, so there's a whole bunch more stuff. Depending on who I send it to, it might, if it's involving uh, like the police, then uh, I'll have some citations from their statutes that show that, uh, that they don't apply to me. Um, but so I'll have other stuff. But the thing is, is that once you send, once you make one up, modify it the way you like it. If you if if you need one, I can send you one that that's uh, that I uh, I have used. But you're going to have to modify it to for your particular situation. But once you get it the way you like it, and then you want to send it to different people, then the changes are are really minor um, and easy to do. And, um, and so, um, you know, there's not many changes that you have to make. Uh, depending on what's happening, I might have to change a paragraph or two at the bottom. Um, and that's about it. And uh, everything else applies. You know, it depends on, on who it's going to and what the issues are. But the bottom line is, is that it's signed and sealed in red ink on the land. It says that. Red ink is what sovereigns used. And sovereigns always use the right side of the page. And um, make sure you send your notice and demand by registered mail. Registered mail is kept under lock and key, and there's a chain of custody. And you can send it for free using my, proce my procedure in the free mail video. Another way to affect service is personal service by three or four people who will make an affidavit of service. The objective is to build a case against them, and they know it. 
Uh, but that's that's a lot of hassle getting three or four people to go down with you to serve a document. That's a lot of hassle. I like registered mail better, uh, and it works pretty good. If they do anything other than grovel, file a criminal complaint. Let them prove that they're honoring their oath of office. Attach your evidence. Send the criminal complaint to their boss. If possible, record the criminal complaint into the public. After 30 days, add their boss as an accomplice after the fact to the next criminal complaint. Send it up, up the, uh, uh, to the next boss of the chain of command with a notice and demand in which you demand that they remove and prosecute their criminal. And this is one that I would, the notice and demand would be identical to the one I sent to the lower boss, except that I'd add in a paragraph at the end that said, I hereby demand that you uh, uh, arrest this this criminal and prosecutor to the fullest extent of the law. Um, and uh, and then after 30 days, add their boss as an accomplice to the fact, uh, to the next criminal complaints and of the next boss um, and demand they remove, remove and prosecute their criminal. Keep going up the chain of command up to and including the bitch or, or the president. Uh, the um, Add the, add the bitch or the president, record the document into the public, and send them a copy. Always use registered mail or personal service with witnesses. You need, you're building a case. It's exactly what you're doing, and you got to treat it that way. When you use this procedure in an ensuing action, it, it essentially becomes a counterclaim. Always take the initiative. Go on the attack. Show up at the judge's office or the, the chambers a few days before the hearing with witnesses. Always demand. The documents are recorded into the public at the county recorder's office or are part of a lawsuit they're served with uh, and is on file at the courthouse. Copies of the recorded documents are served on the respondents. Constructive notice. Uh, this is Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition again. A constructive notice, a notice arising by presumption of law from the existence of facts and circumstances that a party had a duty to take notice of, such as a registered deed or a pending lawsuit. Notice presumed by law to have been acquired by a person and thus imputed to that person. Okay, so you're basically affecting, you're giving them notice and, and it's constructive notice and then when you record it, then that's even that's that's just even better. Okay, record notice, constructive notice of the contents of an instrument such as a deed or mortgage that has been properly recorded. Okay, and again, um, all of that's Black's Law Dictionary. So there's constructive notice and record notice. Okay, and so either way, you're you're giving them notice. Actapius. Okay, this is what they do in Texas. This is what they do everywhere. Okay. In this chapter, capius means a writ that is issued by a court having jurisdiction of a case after judgment and sentence and directed to any peace officer of the state of Texas and commanding the officer to arrest a person convicted of an offense and bring the arrested person before that court immediately or on a day or a term stated in the writ. Uh, capius pro fine means a writ that is issued by a court having jurisdiction of a case after judgment and sentence for unpaid fines and costs and be directed to any peace officer of the state of Texas and commanding the officer to arrest a person convicted of an offense and bring the arrested person before that court immediately. And so, but again, remember, they have to be in good faith. Okay, and if you defeat their good faith, I've even had cops in Texas. There's a friend of mine that had a capius. And I was with him, and the cop stopped him, and he told him, he says, he's laughing about it. He says, yeah, there's a KPS over, and, you know, this was, I think, in, uh, um, it was in between, um, it was like Bedford or something like that. And, and it was one of the neighboring cities, and they're laughing about it. Yeah, there's a KPS over in this other city, and, uh, you know, but so you better take care of that. <laughs> they know it's nothing. A KPS, this is Tomlin's Law Dictionary. Okay, capius, a real process, formerly of two sorts. Um, so there's two types of capius, capius ad respondentum, before judgment, and then a, a capius uh, ad satisfaciendum, after judgment. Okay, so there's two kinds, before judgment and after judgment. Uh, and so then the capius ad satisfaciendum is a judicial writ of execution which issues out on the record of a judgment where there is a recovery in the court's Okay, of debt and damages, okay? It's a debt instrument. They're selling you into slavery. That's exactly what it is. These people need to be put to death. Okay, that's what needs to happen. Um, it says to satisfy the plaintiff his debt and damages. Okay. 
and so so it's a debt instrument and a capius is not a warrant of arrest okay and so again um that's what you that's this is all stuff that i would be putting in a notice and demand and um i mean this is all stuff the matter of fact everything from now on is stuff that i'd be putting in there uh about um in a notice and demand and um put them in a position that they don't want to talk to you all recognizance bail bonds undertakings or any any kind whereby a party becomes bound to pay money to the state of all fines and forfeitures of a pecuniary character shall be collected in the lawful money of the united states only okay well there is no lawful money and so therefore and they're saying it has to be discharged well that's impossible to pay it in lawful money okay and so that's how you defeat it quite frankly um and it, it even talks about a capius or capius pro fine may be issued in electronic form okay so it's all hearsay all computer entries are hearsay there's no lawful warrants they're all capiuses when acting to enforce a statute and a subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge of municipal court is acting as an administrative officer, not in a judicial capacity. Courts administering or enforcing statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially, merely as an extension, as an agent for the involved agency. It's a kangaroo court. It's a show trial. It's the guy is bought and paid for. <clears throat> okay, this is a, a U.S. Supreme Court. It's a show trial. It is an accepted rule, not only in state courts, but of the federal courts as well, that when a judge is enforcing administrative law, they're described as mere extensions of the administrative agency for superior reviewing purposes as a bought and paid for clerk. Judges who become involved in enforcement of mere statutes act as mere clerks of the involved agency. Okay, so again, he's not a judge. Okay, it's not a court with jurisdiction. It's a kangaroo court. Okay, so the capius, the judge, oh, here, next to this. A clerk masquerading as a judge is not competent to do anything judicial, like issue orders or warrants. Okay, a clerk masquerading as judge is operating in his private capacity and has no immunity. And this is the site. Ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities. It doesn't exist. Okay? So the capius is a nullity. It's a fraud. The judge is not competent to issue a capius, and it's a fraud and a nullity. Okay? These people are Satanists. They are diabolically evil. They need to be put to death. Oath. All oaths must be lawful allowed by common law or some statute. If they are administered by persons in a private capacity. So, all of these government officials can be operating in their private capacity or public capacity or in their official capacity. Actually, it's private or official. And so, if they're in their private capacity, then it means nothing. Okay, and they don't have any immunity. They only have immunity when they're operating in their official capacity. Okay, that's Tomlin's Law Dictionary again. Um, this is Rundle versus Delaware. This is a Supreme Court case. My opinion is and has long been that the mayor and aldermen of the city corporation or the president or directors of a bank or the president or directors of a railroad company or other similar corporations are the two parties that sued and are sued as trustees and representatives of the constantly changing stockholders. A corporation, there being not a natural person but a mere creature of the mind, invisible and intangible, cannot be. A citizen of a state or the United States and cannot fall within the terms or power of the above mentioned article and can therefore neither implead nor neither plead nor be impleaded in the courts of the United States. And so, again, okay, they go and assault you with the state of Texas, okay, they're hiding, trying to hide behind their corporation, okay, and, and they have no right to do that. It's a fraud. It's a fraud. It's a lie. They're Satanists. Once a fraud, always a fraud. Things invalid from the beginning cannot be made valid by a subsequent act. The thing void in the beginning does not become valid by lapse of time. Uh, time cannot render a valid uh, an act void in its origin. Okay? It's a void judgment. It's a fraud. Everything they do is a fraud. And that's where you need to go with it. 
uh, out of fraud, no action arises, and any act by any government official to conceal a fraud becomes an act of fraud. It is a fraud to conceal a fraud, and fraud is inexcusable and unpardonable. Uh, fraud and deceit should excuse no man. And any fraud amounts to injustice. Fraud and justice never dwell together. Uh, what is otherwise good and justice sought by force of fraud becomes bad and unjust. Color of office. They're operating under color of office. A pretense of official right to an act made by one who has no such right. Such person must be at least a de facto officer. An act wrongfully done by an officer under the pretended authority of his office is grounded upon corruption to which the office is a mere shadow or color. Um, Jesuits uh, born in the dominions king's dominions and ordained by the pretended jurisdiction of Rome. Okay, so it's all satanic. It's going back to uh, 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 the Vatican. And a pretended act of parliament, okay, so, and the Declaration of Independence, they talk about pretended legislation, okay? It's nothing new. They do that all the time. And and uh, they lie and wait for you to say the wrong thing so they can justify selling you into slavery, okay? That's exactly what it's all about. This is Black's Law Dictionary Edition, page 2031. Give color to admit either expressly or impliedly by silence that an opponent's allegations appear to be meritorious in common law pleading a a defendant's plea to confession of confession and avoidance had to give color to the plaintiff's allegations in the complaint or the plea would be fatally defective. Okay, and so they everything is a fraud. Um, these these Satanists uh, 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 proceed on the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966 gives them the right to presume all sorts of things. A motor vehicle means a self-propelled vehicle which is registered for highway use under the laws of any state or foreign country. Okay, If it's registered, then they have jurisdiction. If it's not registered, well, they just presume it anyways. They're a bunch of Satanists. Okay. Um, Security means any bond, debenture, note, certificate. I mean, you read this, it's all about commerce, okay? It's the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966. That's where they're proceeding. That's what they're proceeding on. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, make merchandise of him or sell of him, then that thief shall die. And thou shalt put away evil among from among you, okay? We need to put evil away from among us, or we're going to be held responsible. And through covetousness shall they with vain words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. These people are Satanists. You are the father of, the, of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his, alone, of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So, you know, on Judgment Day, if you're afraid, if you don't, uh, if, if that's why you need to stand up and and uh, and be counted, because if you're afraid, if you're fearful, um, you're not going to do too well on Judgment Day. These people are all Satanists, by which he went and preached to the spirits of prison. Uh, and so this is, that's what uh, the hell is, a spirit prison. And it shall come to that pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. And they will be shut up in the prison and not any day shall they be visited. Say so they're all going to go to hell. And it behooves every man who values liberty of conscience for himself to resist invasions of it in the case of others, or their case may, by change of circumstances, come home. So we all need to uh, work together. We need to put a stop to this. And uh, the first part is education. If you love wealth better than liberty, the tranquility of servitude better than the animating contest of freedom, go home from us in peace. We ask not your counsel or arms, crouch down and lick the hands with feed you. May your chain set lightly upon you, and may our posterity forget that you are ever our countrymen. When shall it be said in any country of the world, my poor are happy, neither ignorance or distress is to be found among them. My jails are empty of prisoners, my streets of beggars, the aged are not in want, taxes are not oppressive. The rational world is my friend because I am friend of its happiness. When these things can be said, then may that country boast of its constitution and government. Well, we have nothing to boast about here, okay? Uh, 
The streets are full of beggars. There's bag people all over the place. The jails are busting at the seams. I mean, it's and a bunch of Satanists have seized control of the government. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned of the sword come and take away any person from among them, he has taken in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. And so this is my doing my duty to make sure that people are aware so that I'm blameless. And I hope that you're blameless as well. I hope we're all blameless. And um, either you're part of the problem or you're part of the solution. You are now a watchman. Circulate this video far and wide. Um, other videos, Bankster Thieves 1, 2, and 3, Churchianity Series, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members, Unintroit, Martial Laws Here, Quasi-Contracts and Roman Civil Law, De facto Courts, All Courts are Ecclesiastical Courts, it's all coming from the Vatican, D.C. Courts in Texas and Jurisdiction. Copies of these documents can be found on my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants. I have YouTube videos that are videos of private information shares that show these and other sort court citations that are available for a donation. And this last paragraph is for the all the uh, revenue officers that are operating in their private capacity and and uh, and not in their official capacity and and think that I'm getting some privilege or benefit. Donations to this support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept IOUs, Federal Reserve notes, PayPal gifts, checks, money orders, Bitcoin. Okay, that's not there, but I do take Bitcoin. Send me an email for particulars. Um, and uh, I, I, as for the revenue officers, you can take your privileges and your benefits and put them up your rectal orifice. If you find this useful, then you need to pay it forward. If you don't know what pay it forward means, then watch the movie. My blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. I have a website at sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email is engineerwin at yahoo. Uh, my YouTube profile is Sovereign Living. All one word, all lowercase. Facebook, community page called Sovereignty International. Private group called Sovereignty International. Yahoo private group, administering your public servants. Google private group, administering your public servants. Um... I appreciate you taking the time to uh, watch this. I hope you got something out of it. I tried to keep it as short as possible, but there's a lot of material to cover. Um, and uh, if you want to assert your rights, if you want to uh, be able to uh, uh, um, do what you want to do, be free, you're going to have to um, uh, uh, use these estoppel certificates and and, uh, and put them in a position that they don't want to talk to you. And um, I hope... Um, um, I hope that, um, that uh, you know, you, we all have to decide what we're going to do and how far we're going to do it. But if you need any help, I can send you documents that you can use as templates. And other than that, I, I hope you have a real nice day. If you find this useful, hold it now. I already did that. Um, anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope you got something out of it, and I hope you have a real nice day.